and thanks for joining. My name is Paula Gorry and I'm responsible for Stampin' Up! UK and I'm excited to be here with Charlotte today. So welcome, Charlotte. <laughs> thanks, hello. Charlotte's going to be showing us some fun technique, so I can't wait to get started. How about you, Charlotte? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Hello and welcome to an introductory video on stamping blendabilities. These are Stampin' Up's answer to alcohol markers. They vary greatly from the stamping right markers that you're used to. Why? Well, the answer's in the alcohol. The ink is suspended in alcohol instead of water, which makes it really easy to push the colour pigments around and to literally blend them. Let me show you the difference. Take a stamping right marker, and like any felt marker, when you colour and you try to get a block of colour, you'll see stripes appear. With alcohol markers, that doesn't happen. They really saturate the paper. You'll also get a softer line with no join marks. And with the alcohol, the colours tend to be so much more vibrant. Depending on the saturation, sometimes you'll have to leave your project to dry a little bit, otherwise the ink will bleed into the paper. But what you'll always notice is that the ink will come through the back of your paper. This would be a typical colour with no other shades or tones mixed with it. When you start to introduce another shade or tone and start blending it in, the picture tends to come to life and tends to be a little more 3D. One of the tricks is using alcohol markers is to blend the ink while it's still wet. So you can set little highlights or lowlights or shade by colouring smaller parts and pushing the pigments around. If you don't like something, or if something has a harder line, then you just go over the whole of it again and literally start over. Stamping blendabilities come in 12 colours, but each of those colours has three different shades, one of them being true to a true stamping up colour. What I'm actually doing is pulling the darker shade into the lighter colours. It's as if you imagine you have little pigment particles suspended in the alcohol and you can push those little pigments all around the paper and that's what this is doing, just blending in richly with another colour. So literally with the three shades you can get the darker shade pushed into the lighter one to give a really seamless finish. You can just see how much depth you can really get by playing around and blending in those shadows with the markers. Here's a little card where I've mixed up Wisteria Wonder with the skin tones. Just follow the darker lines of the stamp with a darker tone and you'll get a nice shading, an automatic shading and a nice colour gradient. When you start to get more confident with blending, the next thing you'll want to try experimenting with is learning how to shade. A basic rule to shading is first to decide where the light source is coming from. In this case, I'm going to say that my light is coming in from this side. And if we just draw some arrows just to remind us where the light is going to hit, that will really help. One can also divide your areas up into three parts, like this and say, here's going to be my darkest side, here's going to be a little bit lighter, and here's the light is going to be really, really light. That's just a rule of thumb, of course. I'm going to start colouring in from my edge and do tiny little flicks with my pen all up the dark side of my basket. It's almost as if you're leaving a passage between the strokes for the next colour. Then take in the next colour and colour on top of the other one. You can see the brown tone getting lighter and lighter. I'm going back over it again so it's more saturated and blended. You can see that it starts to blend into each other. And it doesn't matter if you mix the colours or even if you use different colour sets. It's all going to be grand when you're done. So when you've got an effect you really like, you should record it and keep a record of it. What you're going to notice here is this area here. When you've got too much ink or it's too wet, it can bleed into the paper. You're going to see the back here as well. It's really, really saturated. But with a little practice, you can avoid all the bleeding. So here's an idea you can do. Practice with all the different colours and all the colour groups that you can think of. And take a note down the side of which colours you like most. 
The last thing I'd like to show you is the colour lifter. The pen sort of dilutes a colour, it's, it's more of an ink pusher than an ink lifter. And you can run the colour lifter down the wicker parts of a basket, for an example, and this will take away some of the colour, or rather push it out towards the edges, and it will give a more structured effect and, and leave a really nice pattern. I'd love to see your blending toning and shadings with blendabilities, so don't forget to post your pictures on Facebook for me. Thanks a lot for watching. Well, Charlotte, thank you for sharing your creative tips with us. You're welcome. I hope you've been inspired by Charlotte's creative sharing, and I hope to see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye, -bye.